Madeline and the Gypsies. In an old house in Paris that was covered with vines, lived twelve little girls in two straight lines. In two straight lines they broke their bread and brushed their teeth and went to bed. They left the house at half past nine. The smallest one was Madeline. In another old house that stood next door lived the son of the Spanish ambassador. He was all alone, his parents were away, he had no one with whom to play. He asked, please come, I invite you all to a wonderful gypsy carnival. And so, dear reader, here we go. Up and down and down and up. They hopped the wheel, they hoped the wheel would never stop. Round and round the children cried, Dear Miss Clavel, just one more ride. A sudden gust of wind, a bolt of lightning. Even the rooster found it frightening. The big wheel stops, the passengers land. How fortunate there is a taxi stand. Hurry, children, off with these things. You'll eat in bed. Mrs. Murphy brings the soup of the evening. It is half past nine. Good heavens, where is Madeline? Poor Miss Clavel, how would you feel? How would she feel if she knew that on top of the fairy's wheel, in weather that turned from bad to rotten, Pepito and Madeline had been forgotten? Pepito said, don't be afraid. I will climb down and get some aid. It was downpouring more and more as he knocked on the gypsy's caravan door. The gypsy mama with her umbrella went and got some help in the circus tent. With the aid of the strong man and the clown, Madeline was safely taken down. The gypsy mama tucked them in and gave them potent medicine. The big wheel was folded and the tent. They packed their wagons and away they went, for gypsies do not like to stay. They only come to go away. A bright new day, the sky is blue. The storm is gone, the world is new. This is the castle of Fountain Blue. All these dear children belong to you. How wonderful to float in a pool. Watch other children go to school. Never have to brush your teeth. And never, never to go to sleep. The gypsies taught them grace and speed. And how to ride the circus steed. Then Madeline said, it's about time we sent dear Miss Clavel a line. Poor Miss Clavel, a shadow of her former self from worrying because instead of 12, there were only 11 little girls. Stop brushing their curls and suddenly revived when the postal card arrived. Thank heaven, she said, the children are well. But dear, oh dear, they've forgotten how to spell. She studied the postmark, then faster and faster. They rushed to the scene of the disaster. The gypsy mama didn't like it at all what she saw in her magic crystal ball. The gypsy mama said, how would you like to try on this lovely costume of a lion? With a curved needle and some string, she sewed both the children in and nobody knew what was inside the tough old lion's leathery hide. This was a fascinating game Compared to this, all else was tame. A circus lion earns his bread by scaring people half to death. And after doing that, he's fed. And after that, he's put to bed. A lovely dawn and all was well. 
The lion roamed through wood and dell. He smelt sweet flowers. He came to a farm. He frightened the barnyard, intending no harm. They saw a man and said, "Please help us to get out of this old pelt." The man was a hunter. He took his gun. He got to his feet and started to run. Said the lion, "We better go back, for if we're not in a zoo or circus, we'll surely be shot." They got to the tent in time for the show. Look," said Madeline. "There, in the first row." "Oh yes," said Papito. "There are people we know." "Dear Miss Clavell, at last we found you. Please let us put our arms around you." The gypsy mamma sobbed her grief into her only handkerchief. The strong man suddenly felt weak, and tears were running down his cheek. Even the poor clown had to cry. As the time came to say goodbye, the best part of a voyage by plane, by ship, or train, is when the trip is over and you are home again. Here's a freshly laundered shirt. It's better to be clean than dirty. In two straight lines, they broke their bread, and brushed their teeth, and went to bed. Good night, little girls. Thank the Lord you are well. And now, please go to sleep," said Miss Clavell, and she turned out the light and closed the door. And then she came back, just to count them once more: one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. The end.